Hello. Today is Revenge of the Fifth. Yesterday was May the Fourth Be With You. But today, the Sith have returned. Alexa, turn off. I used my powers again. All right, so today we are going to be discussing Revenge of the Fifth. That is another play on words for Revenge of the Sith. So let's go ahead and look at our screen that we have available. Revenge of the Fifth. That is today, May the 5th. Let's look at our word for the day, which is Sith. It can be a noun or an adjective, and it is an organization in the Star Wars universe whose members dedicate themselves to the dark side of the Force. Certain individuals were Sith Lords. So if you're a Sith Lord, Sith becomes an adjective. If you're just a Sith, then that would be used as a noun. Let's look at what the Sith look like in the Star Wars universe. There we are. We have Count Dooku, Emperor Palpatine, Anakin Skywalker, and Darth Maul. Now, this is Darth Tyrannus, Darth Sidious, Darth Vader, Darth Maul. So the characters get a new name if they become a Sith and turn to the dark side of the Force. I tried to represent Darth Maul today. So, that is what we have for our word of the day today. It is Sith, so you can write that on your paper, and we will add that to our Jedi from yesterday. Now, <clears throat> we are almost to the end of our learning lessons, so you have to come every day this week. You don't know what you might miss. All right, so yesterday I asked you to, we're doing character traits this week. Yesterday we did character traits and we did the word Jedi. Okay, so let's write down, let me tell you some of the words I wrote for character traits of a Jedi. I wrote noble, infallible, extraordinary, wise, intense, lethal, brave, and observant. So those are all the character traits of the Jedi. Today's word, which is dun, 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 Sith. Okay, and I drew a little Darth paper on there because he's a Sith. Okay, so that's your word for today and you're gonna come up with some character traits of the Sith. So let's talk a little bit about, oop, I'm losing my, losing my thing here. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about um, Let's talk a little bit about uh, what a Sith is in the Star Wars universe. So some of the Sith, like Darth Sidious, which is Emperor Palpatine, and Darth Maul were not, um, actually Darth Maul started as a person and so did Emperor Palpatine and so does Anakin and so does Dooku. Uh, they are all actually start out and they are force sensitive, which means they do have the force. And then instead of ending up using the force for good, they become, interested in all powerful. Um, where Jedi are selfless and think of others, the Sith think of themselves and they are imperialistic, which means they want to rule. And they think if they're in control and they rule that everything will be better. And sometimes they even think it'll be for the best. So Anakin in the end turns to the dark side because he has visions that he thinks his wife is going to die with their babies. And uh, so he, the Emperor convinces him that he can help him learn how to save them if he will just turn to the dark side. So he thinks he's doing a good thing by bringing peace to the galaxy, by ending the war, and finding out a way to save his wife. But that is not what happens. He turns into Darth Vader. And as a kid, I remember I was scared when I went to the movie theater because I saw it when it was really in the movie theater, the very first Star Wars. And I remember I was sitting in my chair and Darth Vader enters the scene as they blow a hole in Princess Leia's ship. 
and he walks into his theme music and he's tall and he's making that breathing noise and oh, scary. And now I really enjoy, of course, Darth Vader. I think that sometimes the antagonists in the story, which would what the Sith would be, I believe they bring the excitement to the story because their backstories are so interesting to see how did they turn out like that. And it's just interesting to me. Um, because they used to be somebody else usually, and then they turn to the dark side. So anyway, this character that I'm dressed up as today, Darth Maul, I like him too. He is awesome in the Clone Wars, so if you've never watched the Clone Wars, you should watch that. He is so cool in that. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, so Darth Maul also is a Sith, and he's an apprentice, and um, he's Dooku's apprentice. But anyway, so he is in the Phantom Menace, and you think that Obi-Wan kills him, but later we find out he did not die, and that he is actually helping uh, do some bad things in the Clone Wars, so in the cartoon. So if you haven't, like I said, if you haven't ever checked that out, you should. So anyway, if you wanna research the Sith, you can get online, it'll tell you all the things that happened and how they turned. Um, there's there's Sith almost in every movie. Um, the the Emperor turning into Darth Sidious, which he was the whole time, but us getting to see that, that's amazing too. So that's in the movies. So feel free to check those out. All right, now today we're going to be reading our almost last chapter. And guess what it's called today? Conclusion. So last week, a drawing conclusions. Hello, this is conclusion. All right, so are you ready? It's by Tommy. The next morning was Saturday. I got up around nine and checked my computer. I had an email from Dwight. So we're gonna find out where Dwight's going. Come to my house at exactly 9.45 a.m. Bring origami Yoda. Underneath that was a forwarded message from the superintendent that the superintendent from our school had sent his mom. After your departure last night, the board members voted in favor of Principal Rabsky's recommendation that Dwight be reassigned to the Correctional and Remedial Education Facility, or CREF. For the remainder of the fall semester, please contact my office, blah, 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 blah. That was hardly a surprise. We knew the school board was going to send him there. We had totally blown it, or maybe we had done a good job, but the school board just wasn't listening. I figured that Dwight must be pretty depressed and that I should definitely go over and see him. I was pretty depressed too, and I realized that it wasn't even about not having Origami Yoda around. It was about not having Dwight around. He's always been around since kindergarten. And I was just now realizing what a cool friend he was. Well, cool isn't exactly the right word, but Dwight is whatever he is. And life was going to be less interesting without him here. Plus, I was worried about that the Kreff kids were going to destroy him. But I wasn't going to tell him that. I thought maybe I could cheer him up some. He was probably sitting in a hole, like depressed, like a zombie. But when I got there, I saw Dwight in his front yard playing with those giant yo-yo things. My mom let my let me have Diablos back, he hollered, having one of the yo-yos in the air. He didn't seem like a zombie to me. He didn't even seem depressed. Did you bring origami Yoda? He said. Yes, but Dwight grabbed it out of my hands. He immediately put it on his finger and looked like he was having some kind of brainwave conversation with it. Shoo, Dwight says. It's great to have him back. I'm probably going to need him at my new school. I was confused as is usual when dealing with Dwight, because in the chapter before, Dwight had said that Origami Yoda was not real. Your new school? You mean Kref? Nope, my mom's decided to put me in a private school instead. Private school? Yep, Tippet Academy. Tippet Academy? Isn't that Caroline's school? Dwight smiled. And it hit me like lightning. Of course Dwight wasn't depressed. He was getting exactly what he wanted. Goodbye, Rabsky. Hello, Caroline. I'm not one of those people who usually goes around saying OMG, but O-M-G. Once again, everything had worked out exactly the way Dwight wanted. Had he been planning this all along? It was all some kind of crazy mad genius plan. How far back did he start it? just at last night's meeting or everything since the beginning of school? Had the case file been part of the plan too? Was the purpose of the case file not to save him from the school board, 
but to convince his mother that he was a good, misunderstood kid who deserved to go to Tippett Academy instead of Kraft? If that was true, then Kellen and I, and even Harvey, I guess, had succeeded, not failed. No, Dwight couldn't have planned all that. Could he? No, I couldn't believe it. It was too much. Nobody could have figured all out ahead of all. <laughs> nobody could have figured out ahead of time how all that would work out. Well, nobody except Origami Yoda. But Origami Yoda was fake, right? That's what the letter said, right? But wait, if Origami Yoda was fake, then why did Dwight need him at his new school? Dwight. I want a straight answer. Yardstick, said Yoda. Straight? It is. No, I mean, I'm going to ask you a question. I want a straight answer. Is Origami Yoda real? He held up Origami Yoda. Believe in me no more, do you? No, that's a question. I want a straight answer. And from you... Not from Yoda. Yardstick. That wasn't funny the first time. Now what is the answer? <clears throat> what is the question again? Is origami Yoda real? Of course. And guess what? My mom let me have my computer back. So you can always email origami Yoda if you have questions for him to answer. But I thought he couldn't answer questions. I thought he was a fake. Fake? That's mean. You're going to hurt his feelings. But what about that letter? What letter? What letter? The letter. The one where you told Harvey that Origami Yoda was just a piece of paper? Origami Yoda said, Heard of a Jedi mind trick? You have. Hmm? Okay, so Dwight is going to go to Kref. And Tommy is thinking, oh my gosh, he has planned this the whole time because Caroline is his girlfriend and he wants to go to school where she is at and he is totally losing his mind because Dwight said that Origami Yoda was not real to Harvey. And then he just said, have you heard of a... Jedi mind trick. Ugh. So one more tiny chapter tomorrow. So now in your mind, I want you to think about. So we know where he's, Dwight's going to school. So what's going to happen in this last chapter? Is Origami Yoda real or not? Mm. Okay, so let's do... Real quick, I'm going to do our question from yesterday. So the question from yesterday said, for your fact or crud, it said, uh, the movie theaters didn't want to show Star Wars. Less than 40 theaters agreed to book showings of it. Okay, so you have to decide. I had to decide, was that real or was that crud? And it is a can you believe that? Look how popular Star Wars is now. How many years it has been uh, around and how many different franchise things have come off of it and the things that Disney has done with it now. Uh, it is amazing. So can you believe that that was the case? Yeah, it got attached to another movie to help get it mo uh, motivated to the movie theaters. I don't remember what the name of that movie was. But anyway, they put it with another movie so people would have to see that movie too. Okay, now let's talk about tomorrow's factor crud. So here's your question. Okay, you ready? Ben Burt, the now legendary sound designer, he's from Star Wars. His first sound effect on Star Wars was Chewbacca's voice. And Chewbacca's voice is a blend of bear, lion, walrus, and badger vocalizations. So do you think that the very first sound effect that Ben Burt made for Star Wars was, that was Chewbacca's voice, and that it was a blend of a bear, a lion, a walrus, and a badger. Do you think that's true or not? Factor crud. Okay, so 
Now, let's talk about what we're gonna make today. So I'm gonna, actually I think I'll show you the video first and then we'll make something. Okay, so we're gonna watch a little short video of some lightsaber battles um, with the Sith because that's important. So let me flip this and I gotta escape out of here. Oh, look at my Darth Vader cup while we're waiting. Okay, so we'll do this one first. So we'll watch a little bit of this is Darth Vader and Luke. There is Luke. And this is from The Empire Strikes Back. So if you haven't seen that one, that's what this is. So here's Luke. He's trying to be a Jedi. Darth Vader, the Sith, and they're going to have a lightsaber battle. There's his blue lightsaber. Red lightsaber. Okay, so that is a part of the uh, Luke Vader lightsaber battle in Empire Strikes Back at Cloud City. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a little bit of Darth Maul's. He's going to go against Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan when Obi-Wan was still a Padawan. So this is from The Phantom Menace. So let me flip this around here. Yeah. Hold on. Oops. There's Obi-Wan as there's Darth Maul. He has a cool lightsaber. A double lightsaber. So there's a little bit of Darth Maul's lightsaber battle, which is also awesome. Okay, so if you haven't, like I said, watched the Star Wars, definitely need to look up Darth Maul and check him out. Everybody knows about Darth Vader, but if you're not a real Star Wars fan, sometimes you don't know about Darth Maul. Darth Vader is obviously awesome and uh, was a super cool character that George Lucas came up with, but I also like Darth Maul. Okay, so we're gonna make something today that has to do with the bad guys, the Sith. Okay, so if you have a paper plate at your house, it doesn't matter what it looks like, just a paper plate. If you don't have a paper plate, because some of you may not have a paper plate, you can just cut out a round circle, okay? So I'm gonna use a paper plate. I'm gonna cover it with some aluminum foil if you don't have aluminum foil, you can just color it. You don't have to use aluminum foil, but I'm just gonna put it on top of my plate, like so. I'm just gonna wrap it around, like that, just so it goes all the way around. Just kinda crunch it behind there. Okay, so it looks kinda like that. Now what we're making today is the Death Star. Now, if you don't know anything about the Death Star, it's a weapon that the Empire tries to use to get rid of the rebel forces and um, the Jedi. So it's, an, it's a big round circle and it fires out uh, things that blow planets up. So you definitely would be scared if you saw this big floating thing in the sky. They thought it was a planet, but it figured out it was a, um, a weapon of mass destruction. Okay, so we've got it covered up here. And like I said, if you don't have foil, you can just color it like a gray color. Okay, then what we're gonna do is, uh, let me get my markers out here. I don't know if you have any markers at home either, but maybe you will. 
see what I color I got in here. Here's a black, that'll work good. Put that back under there. My headgear's falling off. Uh, it's hard to do crafts and be Darth Maul. <laughs> okay, all right, so here's my plate. So I'm gonna just turn it this way so you can, ooh, so you can kind of see. So I'm gonna draw the actual part that shoots out the blast. So I'm going to make a circle. Can you see that? And then I'm going to make another circle inside like so. Okay. See that? Okay. Then I'm just going to draw some lines like this. We call this kind of the eye of the Death Star. Make them a little bit thicker. Dun, 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 dun. I have a Death Star in my classroom that I painted off of an old globe. It's kind of cool. Good way to repurpose and recycle. Okay, so there is your, can you see that? Your eye for the Death Star. So now what you can do is you can make it look, it kind of looks like it has bricks all across it. So what I did is I cut some little paper um, out, made little squares. So here, I'm gonna put you right up here so I can see better. Okay, so I just took some black construction paper. If you don't have black construction paper, you can obviously just use um, white paper. Oh, oh my goodness, sorry, <laughs> white paper and color it black, okay? So just cut like a strip, like so. And then I just cut little squares. And they don't have to be perfect in length because this doesn't have to be perfect, obviously. And it's kind of all looks like bricks. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just gonna take some glue. So let's look back down here. Yeah. There we go. Get my glue open. And then I'm just gonna kind of put a little, well, maybe I am, hold on. I need an assistant. Yes.